The saying goes, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. As a financial services consultant, I believe that to be true. For me, being a financial consultant is sharing my knowledge, skills, and experiences with others and watching them succeed in making their dreams become a reality. With a decade of family and business financial planning experience, I decided to leave behind the 9-to-5, high-rise, corporate grind for a more personal and flexible lifestyle. I am now able to aid in the success of my clients that I want to work with, while being the mother I always wanted to be. My firm, EDJ Consulting, specializes in small to medium-sized business bookkeeping and payroll processing. If you are a business owner or know someone who is and located in the U.S., please go visit emmadon.com for a full list of professional services offered. Now, if you're a mom like me and looking for a more flexible professional career opportunity that you can do anywhere, anytime, maybe becoming a home bookkeeper is right for you. Pre-sales for the Home Bookkeeper Masterclass are now available under the resources page on my website, emmadon.com. This course includes everything you need to know about starting your own home bookkeeping business, from learning the number one accounting program to building your brand and gaining your first clients. Go visit emmadon.com today. Hey, Wine Moms, and thank you for listening to this MW Network and Emmadon production. Now available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, themommywines.com, and wherever else you get your favorite podcasts. For exclusive content and early access, make sure to tune in on Patreon. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Mommy Wines podcast. I am your host, Emma Don, and today I am joined by um, another international guest because you're in Canada, right? I am. I'm currently living in Melbourne, but I'm from Canada. Perfect. That is so fun. I personally love Canada, but if you out there listening are a BAB, which is what I call a boss ass bitch, then Kyla is going to help you eliminate anxiety and fix your life. So (laughs) I was amazed when I came across your Instagram profile. Thank you. You're welcome. I was like, I have to talk to this girl. Because I am an entrepreneur and I have anxiety. So let's do it. (laughs) Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. That's very sweet. Oh, you're welcome. So what got you into this? So growing up um, in my household, we never really talked about anxiety or brain health or anything. It was all just like performance. And my mom was an entrepreneur. So she would work until 11 p.m., 2 a.m., all these crazy hours, and everything was all about performance. It was never about how we're actually doing as a person. Okay, yeah, so, get that. Yeah, exactly. And it's like we never took the time to check in with ourselves and just see how we were doing. And we, but my mom had quite severe anxiety, and so did my sister and I, and it started from a very, very young age. So going through all of that and then going into university, I was having panic attacks almost every single day. Oh, geez. And Yeah, and I, I felt like I was a victim. I didn't know that there's another way of life. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. And in our society, like in Western society, um, I would talk, I talked to my doctor about it and he would just give me medications. So I think he gave me Advan, which is like lorazepam. That's kind of just like, it helps with panic attacks, but it's also kind of like a sedative and it's very addictive. Yeah. And I, I actually have a prescription for lorazepam sitting in my purse. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's very addictive. And I was given that when I was like 16 years old. I didn't understand anything about anxiety. I didn't understand anything about my brain I just thought it was normal to be this anxious and scattered and at the same time I was battling some depression as well okay yeah that I get that too Mm -hmm. so I was kind of confused with what was going on the doctor was just giving me pills and this was the life I was living and it wasn't until I was in university and I was in business and my anxiety was the worst it's ever been 
And then I came across health coaching. And it really wasn't until I became a certified health coach that I learned there's another way of living other than just feeling so anxious. And I'd never taken the time to actually look at my health from all these different perspectives. So doing that, I did my health coaching certification, I did my mastery certification and a specialty in mood and brain health. So I really just used myself as the human guinea pig and I started studying under all these amazing experts and started learning that there's such a different way of living than I was used to because I had done the therapy thing and I just felt like that never really helped me. It was good with working on past wounds and traumas, but no one was actually giving me an action oriented process of like, this is where I am, this is where I wanna be. And I just knew that there was so much more out there, I would say, for my life. Yeah, therapy never worked for me either. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I try, I did all the things that my doctor said, like I was taking the medication, I was going to therapy, I was exercising, and it just was not working. So once I got this brain and mood health certification, I really dove into um, researching and studying under all these brain health experts. And since then, I've been able to um, overcome my anxiety, get off the medications, and I haven't had a panic attack in, I would say, probably years now, a couple of years, whereas before it was every single day, and I was on medication, I was still having them. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I couldn't imagine I've been... two years <laughs> or even a year without a panic attack. Yeah, it's honestly, it's quite amazing. Um even just going to the mall alone and being in Melbourne, I would have never been able to come here before because I couldn't even, like I couldn't get on an airplane without having a panic attack. So it's been quite amazing. And now I just, I really want to share this with other women, uh, other entrepreneurs, because that's what I am. That's what my mom was. And that's what I've, you know, it's kind of what I've known. I haven't really known the regular nine to five. I mean, I've had nine to five jobs, but the entrepreneurial spirit has really just been a part of my life and my mom's life. And I've seen how anxiety held myself back. It's held my friends back. It's held my mom back. Um, so that's really who I wanted to target and help mostly. But it's, it's quite amazing to be able to go and do the things that you've never felt that you're able to do. Whether it's even just doing this podcast interview, like I never would have been able to do this a few years ago when I would have anxiety, I'd literally have a panic attack just trying to talk to you. Oh, no. (laughs) See, there are times, like, um, I record every other weekend. So my last recording session, I was just, like, in the depths of it. I was anxious. Mm -hmm. I was depressed. I had a panic attack over the weekend. And, like, Sometimes I hear other people and they're like, oh, yeah, I have a panic attack and it lasts like a couple minutes and then I can kind of get myself Mm -hmm. out of it. But for me, if I have a panic attack, it's Mm -hmm. like this lingering sensation that lasts a day, sometimes into the morning. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. I know mental health is so different for every single person. It's like a personalized the whole situation it's a personalized journey for everyone and I can empathize with that so much like more than you can imagine and that's kind of why I'm doing that's why I chose this niche because I wanted something that I could relate to people with yeah and like I understand having panic attacks and you can't even leave your room like I've had times I couldn't even leave my bed oh without definitely, feeling absolutely yeah. terrible I've yeah and it, I feel bad too because there are times where if I've had podcasts where I've just powered through it and I've been mm-hmm. proud of myself for powering through it because oftentimes like I just I won't leave my room or I won't leave my house or I, I won't do it. I'll have to reschedule. Um, mm-hmm. But then I can kind of tell that those emotions and that kind of emptiness comes through Mm -hmm. in the podcast episode and my voice is weird. I'm not as like quick witted. My conversation is lagging. Like 
a mm-hmm. YouTube video buffering in 2007. Like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> and I, last weekend was definitely one of the weekends where I just had to email people and be like, unfortunately, I just cannot do it. We need mm-hmm. to reschedule. And if you don't want to, like, I completely understand. And I hate being that person, but sometimes mm-hmm. I like, I I just need to not do whatever exactly. it is. Exactly. <laughs> just and you not. Know, sometimes, sometimes it's okay to not be okay. And I think we put such a pressure on ourselves to always be perfect. And yeah. of course it would, in an ideal world, yes, it would be amazing to be 100% every single weekend. So you can show up to all your obligations. And of course, like that's what we're striving for. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge like, it's okay to not be okay sometimes. Everyone has their their like peaks and everyone has the times that they're really down. And it just, it fluctuates, it's life. It's kind of just the way that it goes. Um, personally, I believe we just want to continually try to build it higher and higher so that that the lows aren't so low and the peaks stay a little bit more stable but that takes time yeah I feel I don't know I feel like I I feel like the word journey is so overused everything is a journey now but I kind of view mental health as like a like a workout And this Mm -hmm. year, I'm trying to take my, like, emotional workouts and my physical workouts very seriously. I know it's like a Mm -hmm. 2020 resolution. Oh, let's get healthy. (laughs) It's kind of cheesy. But I've I've noticed in the past, after I had my son, um, it was about, like, five months after I had him, I started going to a gym. And I was going so regularly. It was like five to six days a week. I'd be there for like an hour and a half. I was getting into really good shape. I was eating well. I Mm -hmm. felt better. And it's crazy because if I just lay around all day at home watching TV, I will be exhausted by the end of the day. But back when I was working out, I had so much energy. We would work out. We would come home, take a nap, and then he'd wait. I wouldn't take a nap because I'm a grown-up, but he was a baby. And he would take a nap, and then we'd, like, go out to eat lunch and, like, go to the playground, and we would run errands Mm -hmm. and all of these things. But now Mm -hmm. I've kind of fallen out of that routine, and I've noticed that, like, now I'm getting my groceries delivered. I'm not working out, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I'm just so like exhausted and my mind is so cloudy and I don't know I'm just trying to research and find inspiration and tips and tricks on how to kind of work out the mental health part of my mm-hmm. and they, my they really go hand in hand because when you are exercising more that's really good for your brain health And when you're feeling in a better mood, you're more likely to go exercise. So it's kind of like this spiral effect where you can either go upwards or it can go downwards where you start forgetting to work out and then your mental health kind of takes a toll and then your mental health is not very good. So you have, don't have the motivation to work out. So it can kind of, it can spiral downwards or it can spiral upwards. And that's where I really think accountability is so important and that can come with either like accountability partners with coaches that's kind of like the main purpose of coaching is like a huge part of it is just really holding someone up so that they feel like they're ready to go and do those things and they're able to do it but I find without the accountability it's like we can say that we're going to work out every day and I'm totally guilty of this and it just doesn't happen oh I think everyone's super guilty of that Yeah. New year, new wine. And of course, I'm talking nakedwines.com. If you haven't tasted the delicious, independently crafted wines from boutique winemakers around the world, can you even call yourself a fellow wine mom? Debatable. But don't worry, I got you, girl. Use code MOMMYWINES50 or click the link in the show notes below to receive your first six bottles delivered right to your door for only $34.99. 
That's $34.99 for six bottles of wine delivered to your door with code MOMMYWINES50. You're welcome. Yeah, there's, I need to find, I'm still, I know I should be better prepared, but I'm still working on my New Year's resolutions and I really want to make like smart resolutions. I want to make them Mm -hmm. like achievable and, you know, positive and all of these things and, um, you know, just kind of realistic. Like, I think it's a big downer for my mental Mm -hmm. health, especially, and I, get this a lot because I don't work a nine to five job. I, you know, have multiple businesses that I run myself. So Mm -hmm. a big chunk of when I get work done is when my son goes to visit with his dad and Mm -hmm. that's every other weekend. And sometimes like the weekend will come and I'm just not in it. And then like so many things suffer because of that but Mm -hmm. um I am like really hard on myself I set and I have a bad habit of this is I set really um just unrealistic like to-do lists and I'm like Mm -hmm. okay I'm gonna have two days or I'm gonna have three days and I'm gonna get you know this list of a hundred things done and then Mm -hmm. if I don't cross all of the hundred things on my list then I don't know like I kind of beat myself up about it and that's hard like that's a lot of pressure it is a lot of pressure so it's like even with lists one thing that I've learned is like if you put them on your um say like your day time or whatever if they don't get crossed off just moving them to the next day because then it's like you kind of give yourself that breathing room if that makes sense where if it's not done it's okay it can just go in the next day Because to-do lists, like, we can have to-do lists forever. And if we let them get to us, then we'll feel perpetually behind. And no one wants to be in a state where they feel perpetually behind. So how do you work your business with entrepreneurs? Like, how are you, are you mostly accountable? Do you do, I noticed on your Instagram that it showed a lot of like nutrition and lifestyle is, Mm -hmm. do you have, um, like diet plans or tell me a little bit about what, these things. So the way my program works is there's really two aspects to it. One is the educational aspect where we go into like kind of just unraveling like what anxiety is, how it affects you. Um, We look at nutrition, water, sleep, exercise, like movement, creativity, breath work, spirituality, um, as well as the mindset stuff, which can be like reframes, looking at things from like changing the perspective of things so that you're doing it from an empowered mindset versus a disempowered mindset. And that's a really big thing to help. Um, just understanding the way that your thoughts work and the way to change them so that you're not stuck in that constant like anxiety, rumination, or feeling bad about yourself. And then the other side of things is the coaching part. So that's where the accountability comes in. And that's really where seeing something from a different perspective and having someone to really like hold your hands, but at the same time guide you to the best version of yourself, whereas you wouldn't really be able to get there on your own. So with those two pieces together, that's where the magic really happens. Well, it's three pieces. It's like the system, the support, and then the accountability. And once you have those three, then that's where you get to the promised land. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so how, on a scale, one to 10, Mm-hmm. How important do you think it is to meditate? Okay, so the thing is, a lot of people say you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. I, I think that's complete BS. You need to do what works for you. So I'll give you an example. If someone's drinking five cups of coffee a day 
and having sugary cereal for breakfast, even if they meditate, they could still have anxiety. Okay. Because they're not doing the other things. (laughs) I drink six cups of coffee. (gasps) Oh, that's not good. (laughs) I I brew. My coffee pot is a 12 cup pot, but I brew six. And I am a cereal addict. Okay, so that can make your anxiety a lot worse. So, yeah, the way that I like to look at it is there's, so if you think your health, for example, like there's so many different facets of it. There's so, it's like very multidimensional. It's not just one thing. So I can't just say, just med- just meditate and you'll hear your anxiety. It does not work like that. You have to incorporate all different aspects of it into your lifestyle and for some people they don't like meditating so you can't tell someone who's never meditated before and that doesn't like meditate sorry doesn't like meditating to go meditate but if they're doing the other things then they can really improve their anxiety okay because I've read so many books and I've listened to audible and all these Mm -hmm. different things about um like pushing through mental health, entrepreneurship, and Mm -hmm. so many of them preach and preach and preach meditation. And I know Mm -hmm. that it's a powerful tool and I know it's, you know, designed to do good, Mm -hmm. but I have just had like the hardest time trying to fall into like a meditation routine. Yeah. And I always kind of feel a little dorky, not going to lie. I don't feel dorky. But yeah, I mean... (laughs) It's not, it's definitely not for everyone, especially when you think about those, like you see a statue of a Buddha or like someone just sitting there completely silent and in this meditative trance for two hours. Like, I don't know about you, but like, I think that's crazy. I personally do not know if I could ever get to that level. I don't think I could either. I can never turn my thoughts off. They're just like a merry-go-round of like, yeah. Going in circles, something new all the time. So there's different types of meditation, and that's kind of where you find what works for you, and you don't even have to label it meditation. So I'll give you an example is when you're walking, just looking at the trees and looking at all the different patterns on the leaves and watching the water drip down a leaf or a ladybug crawl up the side of the branch or something, that you can get yourself into a meditative state by doing that. Or there's listening to um, different guided meditations. And personally, I like to do those while I fall asleep. But there's so many different ways. You can even just lay on the grass and watch the clouds go by. And just having your brain focus on one thing at a time, that's really that's really where the meditation comes into play, where you kind of just silence everything else and focus on one thing. And yeah. I find you can do it in a multi- like so many different ways not just sitting there and thinking about nothing because that is very hard to do with someone with anxiety whose mind doesn't stop racing yeah sitting there and being completely silent like it takes a lot of practice to get there yeah it's it's a bit much you it's a, it's a bit much yeah. you have a like yoga teacher meditation voice I used to have a oh thank you welcome <laughs> I used to have an app called calm and mm-hmm. like they had like these smooth talking like relaxing people on there and I'm like man this girl should start a calm app <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, I like it when it's with coaching, then I can be very smooth and calm because, I don't know, I don't appeal to the people that are very harsh and intense. And I mean, I wouldn't like to have them as my coach and the clients I've had have been much more, I would say, similar in the sense. Yeah. More chill and stuff. And I think it's just what you vibe with. So, I mean, I guess that works out well. (laughs) Yeah, I've had a really hard time trying to get – I've never really had to work out in my life until after I had my son. Mm-hmm. And after I had him, I you know, I wanted to get back in shape, and mm-hmm. I tried some, um, like, fitness classes, and there was, like, a spinning class where the person was like – go, 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 you can do it, push, push, push. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. God. 
And then Sin kills me. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know why I would be like the worst, like marine person. Because, like, people yelling at me does the complete opposite of what it's supposed to do. Like, they're supposed yeah. to be, like, encouraging and, and like, you know, get you pumped up and all this stuff. But it, like, shuts mm-hmm. me down. Totally. And I've been like that my whole life. Like, if even if I got, like, in trouble when I was a kid and, like, my grandma yelled at me, I would be like, oh, no. And I would just, like, glaze over and just, I'd be mm-hmm. like a robot. I'd be like, oh, powering <laughs> down. And I can relate to all of that. And like, it starts in childhood. So if that's what you, that's your coping mechanism. So I know for, for myself, um, for example, like my childhood was not all roses and daisies. Uh, there was a lot of really hard times. And that was my coping mechanism where I would just shut down and shut out the world. So the same thing now, like when people are yelling at me, I mean, it doesn't make me feel good. No. And, like, there's times where I swear I just, like, black out. Mm-hmm. Like, the totally. Easy, like, the, the easiest thing I can think of is to relate it to is, like, a robot that, like, runs out of batteries. And they just, like, shut off. Mm-hmm. My, I sometimes, like, I won't have, and it's not even, like, if somebody's just yelling at me. Um, like, I had, like, a really hostile, super toxic work environment at a credit union here where I live recently and when I would speak with like my manager or something and it was like going south I Mm -hmm. would leave the room and I would completely not have like any memory of what just happened Mm -hmm. and I I would Mm -hmm. be like anxious and panic attacky but like I don't know it would like there's like big chunks like missing and I don't remember what they are that's just your body that's just your brain trying to protect you it's just a coping mechanism because your brain's getting so instead of being like overwhelmed and going into this like super anxious panic attack mode it just shuts down and that's its way of coping As a mom, I know how important it is to have a good meal, and more times than not, I need something prepared, like, now. And I mean, like, right now. Because Milo goes from happy to hangry in a matter of just minutes. I'm pretty sure he gets that hangry jackal and hide side from me, unfortunately. Which sometimes makes it hard to make healthy choices and not just hit the nearest drive through window. But not anymore. That's why I love Real Good Foods. Real Good Foods is currently offering 10,000 free product vouchers to the first 10,000 folks that text Real Good to 474747. Feel good about mealtimes and snacks with Real Good Food. Make sure to text Real Good to 474747 for your chance to try Real Good Foods for free. Once again, text Real Good to 474747. It's it's insane how powerful our mind is and how it does these certain things that sometimes they can work against us, but they're usually for a purpose. I think what I'm going to really try to focus on this year is kind of just listening to my mind and listening to my, not like I have voices in my head or anything, but like listening to, you know, the signals, listening to my body and just kind of living a more peaceful life. I don't think I'm ever going to be relaxed. I just don't think it's something. I think you could get there. Nah, I think you could get there. It would be like (laughs) a process of like lifting weight is what I look at it like like you know how like but you know everything everything's a process yeah Mm -hmm. like I just view it like a scrawny dude goes into the gym and then like um months later or whenever he walks out and he's like all buff like Mm -hmm. that is I feel like what it would have to go through like even if I went on vacation like I've never been on a vacation where I didn't work Mm. and I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm such like a productive person. Like I like to feel 
productive and accomplished. So like, I can never just relax or just chill out. It's funny. I was talking about that yesterday um, to someone because we were watching tennis and I was like, I was like, you know, I used to always have to be watching like a documentary or reading a book or doing work or something productive. I could never just sit there and watch TV just for the enjoyment of it. And I was like, that's something I really had to work on. And it is a process, but it is possible. But you're right. It is like going to the gym where every every week you're getting stronger and stronger. And there's all these different muscles within your brain and within your body that you're building. So it's just like one step at a time. And with small improvements is when you'll get there. It's like if you try to hike Everest, you don't just jump to the top. You take one step at a time. And Why not? <laughs> I know everyone wants you. Everyone, everyone wants the shortcuts, and that's why the medic. That's why the medication, like the industry, does so well because people want the shortcuts. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. a big problem here in Utah, um, where I'm at. There's such a like opioid, opioid and narcotic, like. Um, dependency issue here oh god same in Vancouver it's such a it's like a crisis yeah it's awful Mm -hmm. and a lot of it's mental health related yeah and personally I think it's a really big problem and I wouldn't say that it's the people to blame because the people didn't know any better starting taking these pills I would say the, the pharmaceutical industry has just pushed them so hard and the doctors like the doctor's training is in medicine as in prescription pills like I've talked to doctors and they get barely any nutrition education they don't get much lifestyle education they get medication education like how to give pills for certain illnesses and people aren't being told that these pills could potentially ruin their life and they could get people can get so dependent on it that they feel like they can never get off. Yeah. And that's something that I struggled with originally. I was afraid to get off of it because I was on antidepressants um, as well. So I was quite afraid to get off of them. And I was like, how am I supposed to get off of these without going crazy? Or because some days when I would forget to take my antidepressants, I would literally be in the bathroom crying because I was so used to them and then just going off them my body would go through the withdrawal so yeah it took a while to get off of it it like I am on a prescription and I've been on it so I really love the doctor that I had in Nevada and um mm-hmm. it's it's definitely one of the considerations I have of if I want to stay in Utah long term if I want to go back to Nevada um mm-hmm. but my doctor there, after I had my son, I've, I've always had anxiety. I, mm-hmm. and it's through therapy in the past, they've said that, yeah, obviously this is like a, a chemical imbalance. It's not, you know, major, but a lot of my anxiety and depression comes from situational circumstances that yeah. I'm just not properly dealing with. It's not completely a... Like, I'm just, like, a broken person. I'm just reacting to my atmosphere. I was going to say, and the thing that pisses me off so much is that they toot this. They say, oh, it's a chemical imbalance. You need this medication. Well, you can fix it by exercising. And you can literally exercising produces chemicals in your brain that can help with anxiety. And you like you said, situational, like, there's so many things that we're doing that are causing our anxiety and causing our depression causing our ADHD and we don't know it because we're just living this life where we're not told like no one tells you there's no sign on the coffee saying this is this may give you anxiety and panic attacks uh like enjoy with cough with caution don't have too much of it like no one tells you this stuff when you drink alcohol no one's telling you like if you are, are anxious the next day or depressed that's probably because of the alcohol no one tells you the stuff. And when you see your doctor, they don't even go into 
any of the education, they're just like, oh, it's a chemical imbalance. Even though they don't know how you're living your life, they don't know that you're not exercising. They don't know that you're drinking like five, six cups of coffee or having beer every single night or at home, everyone's always screaming at each other. They have no idea about that stuff. They just say, it's a chemical imbalance, take these medications. And that's the thing that drives me insane. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I really appreciated about uh, my doctor back then mm-hmm. is there, it was a family slash um, like OBGYN office. So mm-hmm. I was able to bring me, Milo, everybody, like the whole family for whatever needs occurred, they could go. Um, <laughs> and it was great because it was kind of like a one-stop shop and they all communicated uh, within each other. Um, mm. So it was very handy. And once I went in for my um, postpartum checkup, which is about between six to eight weeks after um, having my son, uh, mine was eight weeks. Um, but I told him, I was like, I'm not feeling like mentally like clear. And we went over mm-hmm. like this worksheet and he, it, it was kind of funny because it was like this worksheet that they always give you, especially after having a baby, because there are like postpartum anxiety and depression and yeah. baby blues and things like that. Um, but I filled out the sheet and he's like, okay, well, you're fine. And Milo's fine, but who's this other person? And I'm like, okay, well, that's my son's dad. And yes, he is in a constant state of danger um, because he's annoying. But um, what I really liked about his kind of, um, I guess, medical way of doing things is Mm -hmm. he didn't immediately write me a prescription. He, He gave me a dietary sheet and he listed things like, um, sugars and artificial sugars, um, Mm -hmm. glucose or like, um, no gluten, uh, how like, and then under each kind of column or section, it was, oh, gluten, why you would consider maybe slimming this down in your diet and it's because Mm -hmm. oh maybe your body breaks down gluten in a way that is rapid because I do have hypoglycemia Mm -hmm. um so when I eat things like bread and carbs and pastas um they break down into sugars like very quickly yeah it spikes your blood sugar and then you crash yeah that's exactly what happens and um some things like that, like he really wanted me to like limit gluten, maybe not take it away, but limit it, um, you know, maybe use it as a side of a meal and not the whole meal, um, Mm -hmm. artificial sugars and like super highly processed things like high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. He wanted me to eliminate. Um, and then, yeah, those are all really important things to really cut down in order to really have your brain functioning the way that you want to function and feel clear. So it's quite amazing that your doctor gave that to you. That sounds like very rare. I've never came across a doctor that's done that. And it's crazy too, because he was like super old. Like, (laughs) like if I think of a doctor who's going to give me that kind of like health advice or medical advice, I think of him being like a Mr. Miyagi kind of situation or like a younger person from I don't know California not this Mm -hmm. like random like old man in the middle of Nevada (laughs) yeah you know but um we we kind of like monitored things he told me I could come in and get a prescription if I was like really overwhelmed he didn't give me any kind of lorazepam Xanax any of that um Mm -hmm. but he did strongly encourage me to now that I was physically cleared by my OBGYN to maybe start small, um, doing some kind of cardio exercises. And that's when I got my gym Mm -hmm. membership. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, anything that could get my heart rate over 140, he said, releases some kind of, I don't know, endorphin or Mm -hmm. whatever. 
and it can kind of boost up those like happy emotions. Um, and then mixing that with some of the diet changes because I love carbs. That's just like, <laughs> that's just like my thing. I don't know anybody yeah. who doesn't like carbs. I know plenty no, we of people. all get addicted. We all get addicted to carbs anyway. So, oh yeah, that's I know plenty of carbs people are... who are like on a no carb diet, but I don't know anybody mm-hmm. who doesn't like carbs. <laughs> I think everyone likes carbs. Everyone gets a bit addicted to carbs. They're quite something that you have to, I find you have to slowly cut them down. Yeah. Otherwise it can be very hard, but yeah, carbs can just spike and they just spike to sugar and then you crash. And when you crash, that's where you get those feelings of anxiety and overwhelm and depression. It's not so good. That's like kind of like the coffee, the coffee. Well, actually coffee makes you anxious when you're up and then when you're down, you feel kind of like anxious and depressed too. Are you a fan of the Mommy Wines podcast? Well, of course you are, or you wouldn't be hearing this right now. One of the best ways to support the show you love, besides obviously tuning in every Wine Wednesday for new episodes, is shopping the Mommy Wines merch store on teespring.com. This is where you'll find all of the Mommy Wines branded goodness, mugs to hold your coffee over cardio morning java, iPhone and Samsung cases, premium ultra soft hoodies perfect for upcoming cooler months and of course flowy teas and tanks flattering on every mommy out there go shop the mommy wine storefront on teespring.com and make sure to use code wine mom for free shipping i know that's one thing i can't get rid of is like wine and coffee like i would i would get rid of pasta and cereal before i got rid of wine and coffee (laughs) Mm-hmm. And you know what? It's everything in moderation, right? So even if you cut down the coffee a little bit, but you worked at the other aspects, then that can help too. It's not just one thing yeah. that you have to do. It's like multifaceted. Um, so you could choose to do all of them or you could choose to do nothing. But of course, the more different things you do that are beneficial for your health is the better you're really going to feel. Yeah. And I, I think some people get that mindset of like you said with the meditation where they're told by certain people or by books like you have to meditate or you have to do this you have to drink bulletproof coffee or like you have to do all these different things and that's not true you don't have to do anything you can do a variety of different things but there's not one thing that you have to do yeah I just I don't know like I really liked the way he kind of handled the diagnosis of like yeah I have anxiety and now that I you know had a baby and my hormones are wacky like I it everything's very heightened um and it was just good and he did end up writing me a prescription but I could have left that day with a prescription for 50 milligrams I think or I could have done the more I guess like holistic route that's air quotes Mm -hmm. I don't know if it it (laughs) classifies as holistic but like taking the sheet the nutrition sheet and getting a gym membership and just kind of like getting into a routine um that is holistic because it's working with your whole body like that stuff helps and that stuff helps everything not just your brain like it helps every like exercise really helps every single organ and I do think what he said, getting your heart rate up is a good idea to help release the chemicals, but also nurturing yourself is a really big part of it. So that's kind of where like the yoga can come in. So ideally you could do say three 30 minutes um, workouts per week where it's the high intensity, as well as maybe three 30 minute workouts where you're doing yoga or something that's really nurturing for your body and for your mind and for your soul. See, that's what I was doing when I was living in Nevada. I would do hit on the incline trainer because that's like my jam. I don't lift weights. I have no like interest in going down in that section of the gym. Um, that terrifies me. But the cardio section and like the yoga classes are my jam. And awesome. I would do hit on the incline trainer and then if it was a day that I had a yoga class, I would normally do um, like an hour and a half of just like walking or jogging or hit on the incline trainer. Um, 
but if it was a day that I had like a yoga class, I did a restorative yoga class with this okay. woman who is super sweet. Um, mm-hmm. And I would just cut it down from like an hour and a half to a half hour. And then my yoga class was an hour. Um, but it completely changed. Like I could have walked out of my doctor's office with a 50 milligram pharmaceutical drug or what I opted for was obviously the nutrition changes um, and mm-hmm. kind of learning how different things affect anxiety. And he still wrote me a prescription, like I said, but it was for 10 milligrams. That's good. So it's like a 40 milligram difference. And I don't know what because, that really yeah. equivalates to because I don't know how strong. You know, what, um, it all goes in your liver and in your body. And if you can have less substance, like less chemical substance in your body, then that's better because, you know, it's like, even though your liver breaks it down, you still get residual effects and you still get it affecting the rest of your body. And the less you can put in your body, the better. Well, what kind of sucks is when I moved from Nevada, where that doctor was to Utah, I had to find Mm -hmm. a new doctor. Um, And they kind of didn't really listen to me. I was asking them about the nutrition thing. um, And they said, oh, yeah, you know, eating healthy and working out is recommended and it's good for you. But Mm -hmm. like you said, they're like, you have a chemical imbalance. Exactly. And now I'm on a 50 milligram of the same prescription. It's the same name or brand or whatever it is. Um. But I'm on a 50 milligram and I have to take it at night and I can't take it. I used to take it first thing in the morning. Um, Mm -hmm. But now that the dosage is higher, I have to take it at night because it like knocks me out. Totally. And that pisses me off so much that they don't because you know what? They're not even educated in it. That's the thing. And if you go and ask your doctor, will this cure my anxiety? absolutely not it will not cure your anxiety as soon as you stop taking it you're going to be back to being anxious yeah it's It's kind of like a band-aid it's a band-aid exactly the way I like to think of it is like I think the best way that we can use medications and the way that we should be using medications is like a life jacket so say that you're drowning in a river you're trying to get your head above water but you just can't you're just underground and it's or underwater and it's just so hard to even breathe. And that's what anxiety feels like. And that's what depression can really feel like where you're just drowning. Yeah. And you can't go to the gym. You can't meditate. You can't do any of those things because you're just trying to like breathe. So that's where the medication can really be a life, be a life jacket. It can hold you up so you're able to breathe. And then you start to learn to swim. And learning to swim is where you start learning how to meditate how to take care of your body, how to take care of your mind, how to get the exercise in and get a really supportive community, how to incorporate all these other different things. Once you can swim and you safely can get to the shore where you're able to hold yourself up with all these different things that you've incorporated in your life, then I think it's a good idea to start cutting down the medication. And of course, you'd have to get your doctor's approval for this sometimes you have to fight for it and I've had that experience but once you have all these other things in place then you can start to take off the life jacket and instead of having the life jacket which is the medication you have all these other tools and these things are what is going to cure the anxiety it's the only thing in the world lifestyle choices are the only thing in the world that can cure anxiety and depression there's not one medication that's able to cure it and see that's what frustrates me too is because my doctor in Nevada said that it's I don't know I might be throwing him under the bus of like the medical industry but he said that it's it's not a permanent solution and exactly. that I would eventually he like because every time I went in to see him, um, he would ask me questions and he would ask me about any changes or mm-hmm. if I've been feeling like maybe I can cut down the dosage, things like that. He was very yeah. proactive. Wow. And like, that's referring. amazing. Yeah. I've never seen a doctor like him and I was obsessed. Um, 
And what frustrates me is when I moved to Utah, they upped my dosage. They gave me like a prescription for like a hundred lorazepam just in Holy case. Shit. Air quotes. Just in case. A hundred. Uh, they gave me a hundred, my first prescription, but then I also had five refills. Are you serious? They just made these these drugs and like Holy you said, shit. lorazepam can be addictive. It's so, it's one of the most addictive things. It's like cocaine. They made like you it don't just, so it's, accessible. It's so addictive. It, it was That's just, insane. it was just made so accessible to me. And I went in there and I was like, yeah, I've been moving. I had to switch doctors. You know, I have really bad anxiety and this move is just making me, you know, out of control. And I was going through custody court at the time. So it was very situational. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to this doctor like I would talk to my Nevada doctor and he just mm-hmm. looked at me and he's like, oh yeah. He's like, you just need a higher dosage and I'm going to write you a prescription for a couple or no, he said a few, I'm going to write you a prescription for a few lorazepam. And I go down from the medical office. They have a pharmacy on the bottom floor. I go mm-hmm. down to the pharmacy to pick up the prescription and I'm like, what? Well, I've never seen a prescription bottle this big before like is this a really big pill because I'm not going to be able to swallow that and Mm -hmm. because swallowing pills makes me gag like bad it just like (laughs) closes me out I I don't like it it gives me a body's natural defense mechanism (laughs) this ain't good for you it just like it gives me a bad taste in my mouth I don't like the feeling of it it's like I don't know I could swallow a raisin in my oatmeal like a hundred times but Mm -hmm. like the act of swallowing a a pill I don't know if it's like Mm -hmm. the creepy chemical part or like I don't know I just like I just get cringy every time I have to do it and I go down and I'm like, I've never seen a pill bottle this big. I can't take big pills. So if this is big, can I exchange it for maybe like a generic version or something? And they're like, oh, no, the pill's actually really small. It's just the quantity. And I looked at it and it said 100 tablets. That's insane. And I'm like, is this like supposed to be for a year? And it said a 30-day supply. Oh, my God. Are you serious? So he was going to give that to you three or four times a day. That's absolutely insane. You wouldn't even be able to drive your car. How would you be able to take care of a baby? Oh, I took one of them in the midst of a panic attack because he he told me to use it like uh, Xanax. He just said that it's a more mild dosage or something. It's more mild than Xanax, which that's not what I heard. But um, I mean, maybe that's true. But people take Xanax all the time. It's like a drug. Yeah. And, like to get high. <laughs> and he told me, he's like, take it in the midst of a panic attack or if you feel it coming on and then, mm-hmm. you know, it'll kind of relieve those symptoms. And I'm like, okay, like that makes sense. I took mm-hmm. one and I was literally out of my mind. Like, yeah. I don't know if I just have like an adverse reaction, but there was a time a few months back where I was having a lot of panic attacks. And every time Mm -hmm. I would take one of these, I didn't take many, but every time I would take one of them for the first few times, I would be out of my mind. And then there was like this one time where I was at work and I was like, I just felt it. It was a very hostile, very toxic environment. And I just like, I was like, I'm going to take one. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not driving. I'm just sitting at my desk. And I, it felt like nothing. And that is what scared me because I'm like, I remember what it was like when I first started taking these like three or four Mm -hmm. times ago to what Mm -hmm. I feel like now. Your body adapts. And it was like, I had just swallowed a Tic Tac. Like I felt like no different. And Mm -hmm. it was such a rapid change. It wasn't something Mm -hmm. gradual where like, you know, you always hear these stories about people who get addicted to drugs and they're like, oh, yeah, like I was taking these pain pills because I broke my leg. And, you know, and then one day I just I found out that I was addicted and it was like, yeah, I don't think I was addicted. But the switch of my tolerance was yeah. so rapid. But you can see how easy it is to get addicted because it's like this makes me feel like you can feel anxious 
and you're like this little pill is gonna make me feel good so even if the baby's crying you start feeling anxious you're like I could just take this and just feel better and that's where the addiction comes in because we just get so used to taking it and you need to take more and more to get the same effects yeah that we end up getting addicted I also wonder if have you ever heard of like I recently heard of this um like the placebo effect where back in the day they did that that I guess like quality controlled like test or whatever and they're like giving sick people like sugar pills and saying that they're Mm -hmm. like magical miracle drugs I don't oh, know. you know, yeah, it was when they, and they did one with the war, with the veterans, where they would give them morphine in a uh, syringe, and the doctor ran out of morphine, and all the hospitals were out of morphine, so he gave them saline water, and he told them it was morphine, and he would inject it with them, or yeah. inject it to them, and they didn't feel pain anymore because of the placebo effect. I kind of, like, I don't know, it's probably very highly illegal, but I would think it would be very interesting to give people who are on a drug like Xanax or lorazepam like mm-hmm. maybe do like 50 50 and like prescribe them like a sugar pill or and mm-hmm. like see what really happens because one of the things I learned and one of the things that my old yoga teacher would talk about was just like the power of the mind over matter And if you can, even if, like, it's so easy to trick your mind, you know, like, like, I really, we do it all the time. Oh, yeah. Even every time, every time you go into a panic attack and you think, like, the world's ending and, like, everything's going to fall apart, you're telling your mind that. Oh, yeah. So you just have to reverse it. Oh, there are times I've had a panic attack and I've, like, called 911 because I'm, like, I'm legitimately having a heart attack. I'm going to die. And yeah, uh, same thing. <laughs> I was like, I, same here. <laughs> I'm gonna die at 30 in single. I'm I'm dying. <laughs> but like, there's I don't know. Like, there's so many times where like, it's so easy to trick your mind, and mm-hmm. it's so one of my like super guilty pleasures is to listen to this. Um, like scary like to listen to scary stories or read scary stories I hate and slash love the feeling of being scared or like watching a scary movie or reading a scary story um but like if I'm sitting here and I'm listening to like a red scary story or something Mm -hmm. I'll start feeling scared and like if it's like a ghost one I'll be like oh Mm -hmm. man there's a ghost in my house or like Mm -hmm. You know, like, when you get into, like, or if you're home alone and you're watching a scary movie, like, you start to think you hear things outside. And I feel like it's so easy to do that to your mind that I wonder what would happen if, like, Big Pharma just got rid of lorazepam and just, like, switched it with sugar pills. Well, it's interesting that you say that with the power of the mind with, like, the scary story things, because imagine you can reverse that. So you can literally tell your mind, like, I am calm, I am peaceful. Like, you can, tr- you can train your subconscious mind just by repeating different mantras, like, I am calm, I am peaceful. If you practice just holding your hand on your heart and taking a breath and closing your eyes and just saying, I am calm, I am peaceful, or something like, I am love, it's the same, it's the same as, oh my god, the world's going to end, like, we're going to get in a car crash, we're going to do all these things. And that's what happens when we have panic attacks is our mind just is racing, racing, racing. Just try trying to flip the switch on that can be so powerful. And even with the pill thing is if you were to say like essential oils, for example, scent is so powerful. So if you were to take lavender and I know it's good for anxiety, it's also just good in the sense that you um, associate that scent with calmness. Yeah. And that's, it's like the, it's like the pills. It's you, you're associating this pill with calmness. You're associating this pill with handling the anxiety. You can do that with scents. You can do that with thoughts. You can do that with so many different things. So it's quite interesting how we can flip the switch on the way that we, um, can do things to our minds and we can flip it in a positive way. 
Yeah. I don't know why, but it's so much easier to go negative than it is to go positive. Yeah. Like, and that's just where, like, being aware, being aware of your thoughts can really come in and try to break those patterns. Because it's, there's a, there's a saying in neuroscience that neurons that fire together wire together. So if you're always having these negative scared thoughts, which happens a lot with anxiety, then those neurons literally start to wire together. Whereas the thoughts that, like the neurons that provoke calmness and peace and serenity, those bonds break when they're not being used. So oh, the more wow. we invoke, yeah, it's incredible. The more that we invoke those feelings of calmness and peace and serenity, literally, if you were to look on, there's these things called SPECT scans, where it shows up the different parts of the brain. I think MRIs can do it too, where it shows the different parts of the brains and the neurons that are firing. You can literally train your brain to wire together those bonds that create the feelings of peace and serenity. I need to hop on that bandwagon. It's incredible. It's it's, incredible. I don't know why. Like, I just, I don't know why it's like this, but it just, it's so much easier for me well, to it's a survival go instinct. negative. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's a survival like- instinct. It's like when we were, you know, like way back when we had to run away from a bear, we all, we, or not run away from a bear. What is it like? A tiger or something. I guess maybe there's bears then too. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would, have to run I would away run from, from a tiger. A yeah, exactly. But if we're with our tribes, we have to be on alert, run away from a tiger. If we hear something in the in the the bushes that could be like a bear or a tiger, we have to be up and we have to be ready to run. And that's really where the survival instincts come in. With like the negativity and the always being on the lookout and things are going to go wrong. But yeah. way back when if a tiger would chase us and then we scared it away, it'd be gone. We could go back to being calm. Now we have the news. We have Trump. We have all these politics. We have, there's going to be a war. There's in uh, Australia, there's fires, there's car crashes. We, We got pings on our phones every single minute. We have all these different things and our brain can't differentiate between a tiger or an angry email or an angry text message from your mom. Yeah, I mean, can't tell the difference. All it knows is danger, danger, danger. We need to run. We need to be in safety and we need to be ready to fight. And it's like there's fight, flight or freeze. And I think the one that you were talking about earlier when you said you would just go blank, that's the freeze. But there's also the fight, which is obviously fighting and then flight, which is just wanting to run away. Yeah. This is like so fascinating to me. I could talk about this forever, but I'm sure people don't want to listen to like a 20 hour long podcast. (laughs) So if you are taking on new clients, go Mm -hmm. ahead and let people know where they can find you online or social media. Mm -hmm. And then I will leave also all of those links in the show notes below this episode. Awesome. Yeah, I'm actually launching a new program. And if you'd like to get in touch to contact me, it's at on Instagram is at Kyla Marie dot B. So K Y L A M A R I E period B. Or you can send me an email at Kyla hyphen Marie dot C A. So that's hello at K Y L A hyphen M A R I E dot C A. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for being my guest today and talking all the crazy nonsense of anxiety with me. You're welcome. I love talking about this stuff. I love just being able to share the knowledge. And I really hope that I'm able to help some people with this. And if you, if any of the listeners seriously have any questions or need support or want to reach out, just send me a message. And as well as you, love to stay in touch. And I just, My whole mission in life is I really just want to change the narrative that we have towards anxiety and help people understand like there is another way and we can get there. It might take some work. It's going to take some accountability, but we can get there. Yeah. Well, I am trying my damnedest 
to put together a Mommy Wines retreat. Um, Ooh, so if exciting. you have, yes, if you have any interest in being a part of that or being a speaker or doing some kind of class, um, mm-hmm. definitely let me know. Send me an email or an instant message, um, or not instant message. I'm so old. <laughs> um, a DM on Instagram and let yeah. me know because I'm trying to put all of that together. Um, that sounds amazing. Ho- hopefully, I can get it put together for some time at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. I love cool. chatting thank with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I love chatting with you as well. And I will definitely stay in touch. Okay, great. All right, have a great day. You too. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Mommy Wines Podcast. Make sure to leave a rating and review. To support the show you love, check out the exclusive branded merchandise on themommywines.com. For extra sassy, honest, and potentially controversial content, make sure to join me over on the Mommy Wines Patreon. Also, don't forget to check out the other shows on the MW Network. If you love scary stories and true crime, you'll love Tales After Dark. More shows are coming soon, so make sure to stay connected on social at Mommy Wines Podcast. And until next Wine Wednesday, mamas, parent and drink responsibly.